welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra. And today's uh, subject is going to be about everything is an extension of... For those of you who are here with me for the first time, uh, we are forced to put all everyone mute everybody because when we all come together, devices tend to make funny noises. So uh, we're forced to mute you for the time being. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a short meditation for about 15 minutes. After the meditation, I begin to talk about the subject of the day. And those of you who are on our system, uh, Zoom, you're welcome to either wave at me, get my attention or write on the chat box uh, your question or just get my attention and I will unmute you and we can talk directly Unless you don't want your voice to be broadcasted Then you can just write to me on the chat box and I'll answer your question For the moment uh, We're going to do a simple meditation simply you just divert your attention inwards now Sometimes maybe some people have a hard time doing it and wondering what does it mean to divert my attention inwards? So for the sake of the argument, I'm just gonna make it very simple. Just imagine that this is in your imagination. All of a sudden a force, a laser beam is cutting through your third eye and your attention goes to this laser beam as it's coming to you. And it's going like an elevator. It's like it's traveling through or like a train compartment, it's traveling through and it's going inwards towards the source of your thoughts. So everything is all of a sudden turns inwards and is going in and your attention is going in that direction to the source of your thoughts and then you get to this point where your thoughts coming from and then you take a look into what's behind your thoughts where did they come from and as you do that then you're going to discover something very, very worthy, worthy of examination. So go ahead, tur turn your in in attention inwards in that direction. Take a deep breath and just relax. And I'm asking, I'm going to ask you for the time being, if you have a mantra, put it away. Don't use your mantra. If you are used to using any kind of techniques, put that away too. Like if you're focusing on your breathing, put that technique away. Just simply without any effort, without really trying to make something happen. I want you to bring your attention to this place. In the most effortless way, you bring your attention to that place before your thoughts arise. And then let's see what happens. Keep it as effortless as possible. Know this, that your being, your presence, your soul is here and does not require effort. 
It's the very background of yourself. It's that part of you which is always here. And you don't have to do anything to be yourself. You simply recognize the space which is here. And that which you are doesn't really have a name. So you can't even define it. <clears throat> but you know it very well. Just hang out in this place, in this space. And if any thoughts rise, arise in your mind, allow them to be. Don't fight them. Don't try to push them away. Be in this place of complete surrender and acceptance. Whatever comes is welcome, and whatever goes is welcome. Just simply hanging out in the space. 
suspended in the air. without any effort trying to go anywhere or do anything. Simply here. Without an agenda. totally in your natural state of being. Available in this moment, to this moment. Like the nature, it doesn't have an agenda. It's simply itself. It expresses its ex expressions through change but it's not trying to prove anything. Simply don't resist things if you're comfortable where you are, then stay the way you are. If thoughts or any kind of emotions arise, it's okay, don't fight them. There's simply clouds in the sky. Something's traveling in the field of consciousness. Soon it will disappear.
you're just hanging out here in the unified field, being present, being available, and open without any expectations. Things will show up or they disappear. Don't make any stories out of it. Don't even believe your own story. Whatever has happened to you, whatever is your story, don't even buy into that. The presence, who you really are, your being, your soul, doesn't have a story. It simply is. And in this meditation, we get a very good glimpse of the truth of who we are. Slowly, slowly come back. Now you're bringing your, shifting your attention from the inner to the other. And this practice that we call meditation, <clears throat> if we're simply doing it in this way, it will reveal itself to you uh, one beautiful thing you discover from it is that where attention goes, when your attention is going outward, to the other world, whether it's 
the other objects outside of yourself or whether your thoughts or your emotions, they're still at, outside of yourself. Even though the thoughts and emotions, they seem like they're happening inside you, but they're still outside of the truth of who you are because you are observing him and you're watching him. You notice them. It's a phenomena that comes and goes. The thoughts come and they go. Even though you think you say it's my thoughts, they appear to you and then they disappear. They're not there all the time. So they're happening outside of you and they're objects. Same as your emotions. They appear and they disappear. So they travel through you. So they're objects too. They come and go. So they're not who you are. They appear and they disappear. And yes, when they appear, you feel them, of course. And then they leave and you know they're, they're, they're gone and you're if they're negative or they're heavy emotions, then you feel relieved that they're gone because they no longer bother you. They're out of your field. But when they're there, they're not comfortable. They affect your senses. But you have a habit and a conditioning to believe that's who you are. And that creates suffering So this meditation we do is to indicate, to show us to by shifting our attention inwards, bringing our attention to the place before thoughts come or the place before emotions rise. So what it does, it gives you a glimpse of who you are, that part of you that is listening to me right now, that part of you which is aware, and that part of you which cannot be changed, it's not affected. The one that is aware and the one who's here can get affected by any of these things. The personality gets affected. The thoughts can get agitated. The emotions can change. But the one who is here, aware, is always here and is always aware. It doesn't get affected. So we bring our attention to that one and in that shift of attention comfort takes over. That's why you get very quiet and you become blissed out. You feel the truth of who you are. You touch it. I'm going to move to the subject we because <laughs> maybe I should have said I'm going to talk about this instead. Now let's talk about I'll tie the two together. Let's talk about connectedness. Let's talk about extension of ourselves. Long time ago, when I was in satsang with my sat guru, Papaji, one day Papaji said, I remember he looked into my eyes, and there were like 200 people sitting there, but I felt like he's talking to me directly at that moment. That's how it felt. Because you really can't explain your connection with your guru. And these moments of transmission that they take place, they happen outside of time space. 
So it's impossible explaining it, but if you're connected to another human being or you're really connected to your teacher and you're sort of surrendered to it, uh, you experience the transmission in, in the, which is difficult to explain it, but some intelligence which connects everything to everything will deliver the information from one person to another person and makes it very clear in that moment. And the realization happens of whatever the subject is. And I remember he mentioned that there is no others. There's no one else. You're the only one here. There's only one of us here. And we all have heard this. We read books, spiritual books. We're watching spiritual videos. And we hear this, but we're not practicing it in, in daily life. And a part of it is because we're not feeling it. You don't feel one with the taxi driver down the street from you. You don't feel one with um, a terrorist that is threatening your life or your society. Um, and you don't feel one with the meter maid who gave you a big ticket that you have to pay $150. You don't feel one with them or someone who's agitating you or is someone who's rude to you or somebody that stole money from you and they cheated you and they looked into your eyes, they shook your hand, they told you their brother, sisters with you and the next thing was they stop you from behind. So you don't feel one with them. So naturally, when we talk about the oneness, it's, for most of us, can't comprehend that. It's a theoretical subject that theoretically, it sounds good and romantic, but practically, on an everyday basis, we don't feel it and we're not touching it. So it's kind of bullshit. It doesn't, it's blah, blah, blah. And we project it on the gurus and teachers and enlightened people that, oh, they live in this oneness and we don't. So that's pretty far away, you know, to get to it because it's also being projected that it's somewhere else outside of us. So I'm going to dissect this for you to make it clear for the analytical mind to understand it because you have to understand it in the mental way first, in the analytical way with your mind gets convinced of this understanding uh, and then once there's some kind of um, intellectual understanding of this, then that gives way to the heart. So let's get rid of the mind first. And then so the heart can really hear what this, this is. The reality of if we look at things from different angles one is that everything is connected to everything everything gets affected by everything else and you cannot be separated from it every decision you make for we let's say you decide on coming to satsang, you decide on joining me today here. Now, you may say that uh, this is my own decision. I decided to come here today and uh, to join you. Um, but this decision you made is subject to a lot of different things cooperating with each other. 
electricity has to be at your home so that that the uh, without electricity you won't be able to use your computer uh, you can run out of the battery internet has to be internet is not working if you don't have electricity uh, unless you're using your phone and uh, so basically you you need your device to be working your phone or your computer has to agree on working and something can go wrong with it your body has to agree on being feeling fine if you get severely ill you have a horrible migraine or you get a really bad diarrhea or something happened to you physically that you really feel ill the last then you lose your concentration and you're not comfortable to joining on this meeting. You're rather to, to be in bed on your, by yourself, have a warm bag on your stomach or take some medication or try to sleep or whatever. So your body has to say yes. Then other conditions, let's say your kids are around they need to be quiet, out of your way, or your partner. They need to just give you space to do it. No one else, nobody comes and knock on your door asking you for questions. There can be a fire at your house. There can be any kind of natural disaster happening. So a lot of different things have to cooperate with each other for you to be able to do a very simple thing to come online and join us here on the Academy. And this is pretty much an effortless event. We're not talking about you getting in your car, driving to the airport, flying to another country. We're just talking about you at the convenience of your home, turning on your phone, your device or computer and joining us but many, many different things have to cooperate with each other, which they're not in your control. It's completely existence universe has to cooperate and say, yes, thumbs up. I'm going to be doing it today. And as you've experienced it, there's times that some of you have come to the academy and something happened to your device. You had to log out and you couldn't log back in. And then you got bummed out and you had to wait till the next time. We all have experienced that. I was gonna say something else and I, I kind of got distracted and I came to this. I was gonna say about what my teacher told me. Uh, one time he mentioned to me that go ahead and go pull the mask of everybody off and do this for the next few months everyone you see pull their mask off of their face of course he didn't mean physically to walk out to people and pull their skin off of their face but i began to that to do that energetically and for the next few months Everyone I encountered, in my imagination, I pulled their mask off of their face to see what's behind their mask. And to my surprise, I began to see the same one behind every mask that I pulled off, I saw the same one. So it was like, oh my God, Oh my God, every time I realize that there is only one behind everybody else. And that's their power source, the life force. It's the same life force. Now, a lot of people use the word consciousness and it's overused and sometimes it's very ab abstract and we can't really touch it. So I'm going to try to use words that are more digestible and they make sense. 
the we're all right now breathing and we're using the same oxygen so obviously we're all connected to through the air that we're breathing and this air that we're breathing in the molecules of it we're breathing it in it goes into our respiratory system and brings oxygen to the cells we're breathing in in and we're breathing it out so continuously the air you're breathing in and you're breathing out is being transferred to the other beings the vegetation the animals the other people there is no new air being being imported from another planet it's the same air that gets recycled and reused and reproduced here on this planet in the atmosphere so as you're breathing it in and you're breathing it out particles of other people that they've been breathing the same thing they enter into you they get processed in your body and they get they get out so we're connected to the air we are connected to the water the water we drink this water has been recycled throughout the ages again there's no new water being imported here from another planet it's the same water which has been here ever since the ever since it's the same water that jesus christ drank it's the same water that adolf hitler drank it's the same water that Chinggis Khan drank. It's the same water that Mother Teresa drank. It's the same water that's going around and around, going through your system, and it's going back to the earth, and eventually it evaporates and becomes clouds and rain and come back. And it's go gone through every living being that ever existed on this planet. So it carries particles of them to you and to me and to everyone else. So we're connected from the water too. We're also connected through the earth that we live on, we walk on, we use its products that supporting the human life on this planet and we're using whatever product that it gives us through the soil. So if you want to look at it from that point of view, you see that we're completely connected to each other, whether we like it or we don't. Now let's go look at the spirit part of it. The living spirit that runs through this planet Let's compare it to electricity. We all use electricity. Now, you're using electricity for different things. Maybe you're, you're using your refrigerator to, to keeping the food cool. You're using electricity for your computer to power it up. You're using electricity for, for lights to see at night. When you're walking into your house, before you walk to your house, you need some light. When you get inside, you need some light. You look electricity for heating up, for cooling off. We're all using electricity. And this electricity you're using is going to your neighbor's home. It's going to the house of the mayor of your town. It goes to the palace of the president or the king or queen or whomever is in charge of governing your country it's the same electricity that everybody uses there's nothing it's not like someone from a hierarchy in society uses a better electricity or a different electricity it's the same one runs everywhere 
And it's the same thing with the living spirit. It's the same living spirit that runs through you and me and runs through the gangster, runs into the good guy, the bad guy. It's the same living spirit. It's not a different living spirit. It's life, same life, same ecosystem, same sun, same water, same air, same earth, same thing, same entity that's supporting different beings on this planet. And it doesn't have any kind of prejudice or any ideas. It doesn't care. It simply supports the living beings. Whether their action is right or their actions is wrong, it doesn't matter for it. It supports living beings. If the living spirit had preferences, then bad people would not exist. It wouldn't give them life. A rapist wouldn't be able to live. A child molester wouldn't be able to live. A murderer wouldn't live any longer. People who manipulating masses whether you want to call them evil corporations or whatever name we want to add to them, they wouldn't be living. They wouldn't be supported by life. Why would life support someone who's evil? Why would life support, let's say these evil corporations that are dumping a lot of chemicals in the water, in the air, or whatever they're doing. Why is life supporting them? Why does life allow them to breathe the air? Why doesn't exclude them from breathing, not giving them oxygen? Why does it support them? It's the same life. So is it possible, let's, let's have our minds open. And I know there's a lot of prejudice and there's a lot of ideas and a lot of people, they come about, they talk, want to talk about free will and we all are given choices and then if we're making the wrong choices, then we have to pay for it and we our th thoughts create our own reality and blah, 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 blah. Okay, I've heard all of it. And believe me, I watch videos, I've read books about all these different ideas and concepts. So we can come up with different ideas and concepts. A wise life supporting evil people or bad intentions. And we'll come up with these different concepts. But can we, for one moment, keep our minds open and look at it from a different point of view? Can we look at it from a different perspective? Can we go beyond good and bad? Could you do that? Can you look at it? Not from the angle of with these glasses of good or bad. Can you take these glasses off and not look at good or bad? And look at it that maybe this whole thing is an expression 
maybe this whole thing of the good people and bad people, it's different expressions of the same living spirit. Maybe the living, living spirit doesn't really care about good deeds or bad deeds. Could that be? Is it possible? Can living spirit not care? Is it possible? Is it possible that it's the same living spirit, it's the same divine being, it's the same consciousness that wants to experience the world of duality. This dimension that you and I wake up every day to it. Wants to experience it from different angles. It wants to experience it from an angle of failure. It wants to experience it from an angle of being a victim or being a winner. It wants to one day or through a lot of different units, human bodies, wants to be a mother, wants to experience it from a female aspect. In the same time, wants to experience it from a male aspect. In the meantime, wants to experience it as a child. It wants to experience it as a person growing old. It wants to experience dying. And it wants to experience birth. It wants to experience giving birth. It wants to experience delivering a child to the world. It wants to experience destroying stuff or creating stuff. Could it be the same one that wants to experience all these different aspects and it's the power source of it too. So if you practice this, so let's say, let's practice this between now and next week, next Wednesday when we meet again. Let's use this as our practice. And you don't have to agree with me or disagree with me. We're just talking. I don't have any kind of attachments into convincing you that this is how it is. You can, I recommend you examine it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Just examine it for yourself because at the end of the day, it has to be your own finding same way as I had to find it for myself. It has to be your own realization. I can only be your guide, guiding you in a certain way, pointing it, pointing out that go this direction and see what you find. So let's say you play this game. We'll play a game for fun, make-believe game. Like when we were kids and we played make-believe games. So, I'm gonna put these glasses on, I'm gonna have an open mind, and I'm gonna look at everything as myself. Everything as myself. Nothing is not myself. So the first thing started to happen as I began to look at things in this direction is I noticed that my fear started to disappear. The fear of what someone's going to do to me, what the enemy is going to do to me. The fear of others. 
Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean I'm not locking my home or I don't, I don't go down, I go downtown Los Angeles or I park somewhere in Los Angeles, I don't lock up my, my car, okay? I lock up my car, I put everything in the trunk, I make sure there's nothing in the car that is attractive for someone to break into it. Of course, those are practical everyday things to do, being street smart. Doesn't mean that you're gonna leave your wallet at the coffee shop unattended and go away for two hours and then come back or your phone and expect it to be there. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is <clears throat> that you begin to see and look at everyone and you may not like their face. You may not like their costume, the way they're dressed and the way they look. You may not like their behavior, the way they act. The way they talk may be bugging you. It's irritating you. The way they smell you don't like. The way they take space may be agitating too. But you put these things away and you look deep in their power source, in their center, and you start to recognize the living spirit, God, Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, whatever name you want to call it. You recognize that living spirit in there as your own their power source is the same power source as yourself. You pull the mask away and you see that it's the same battery, the same engine that is running them is running you. It's the same one. So you recognize that part. So you begin to look at everything and everyone as yourself. It's an extension of yourself. It's not separated from you. It appears to be separated. It appears to be someone else, but it is an image of yourself. It is an expression of yourself. Maybe you don't like that expression, but you don't look at it as others. Excuse me. Yeah. You don't look at it as others. You look at it in this game. We're playing this make-believe game for one week, okay? So you start looking at everyone as yourself and everything. These other governments, these other groups, so one thing that started to happen for me was I started to lose my fear. And as I started to see it that way, and I started, my heart began to recognize that. The recognition came to my heart. And it was like, this is my own self. The entire existence is my own self. And I'm not talking about my own self in an egoic way, okay? Because there's a difference between that, of recognizing existence as yourself and, and falling into the ego and going to this me, 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 or recognition of the divine self, of Her Majesty, of God, of that, appearing as different forms, appearing as different situations. So the fear started to go away and acceptance started to come. Except acceptance began to take over and surrender came. So 
I began to incorporate that in my daily life. And I want to do something. And let's say sometimes I'm make, trying to make something happen. And I want to get into a place and the place is sold out. For example, I'm going to a theater. I'm going to a play. I'm going to a class and it's maybe sold out, maybe not sold out, whatever. I get to the door and I say, I want to get in and they don't let me in. And I try again, I try different angles and they're not letting me in. I try two times, three times, they won't let me in. Then there's a turning point for me is I look at it and I go, okay, this is God telling me no. For some reason, I'm not supposed to go in there. And then there's immediately in that moment is the surrender comes and acceptance that Her Majesty is telling me no. I tried a few times and she says no. Okay, I trust her. Maybe there's, I'm not meant to go in there. And then I just, then there's no story. Existence said no. Existence knows better than I do. And I move on and do my own thing. Now, if a very deep, strong feeling comes that I have to go back and knock on the door and try to get in, then I recognize that too of the same existence is pulling me back because it's the same one. It's the same one pushes you away. It's the same one pulling you back. And it's her play. You start to practice this and implement this. But what happens is the world that you feel and you see it's hostile begin to shift and changes. It becomes of a story that is being played by the living spirit. People, you begin to see them differently. Situations in life, you begin, your encounter with them changes. It's the same thing happens but you're not charged by the event, the event that happens. You go, you park your car somewhere and a, a meter maid comes and gives you a ticket and you try to talk them into out of it and they don't, but you're looking at them that they're your own self. You're looking at them that they're God then there is no charge there anymore. And you just surrender to it. And then you see that nothing is boiling inside you and it's calm and quiet. I'm not talking about being submissive. I'm not talking about not speaking your truth. Don't take me wrong. I'm not talking about not living your truth. That's not what I'm speaking about because that's not what God, God wants you to do. God doesn't want you to be submissive and not living your truth. We're talking about changing the way we look at and seeing everything as ourselves seeing every aspect of life as an expression of yourself, as a part of yourself. Excuse me, I'm gonna pause for a moment because my Instagram ran out of um, time and I'm gonna redo it again. So just please excuse me for one moment while I get this going, okay. Um,
there's a lot of stories, conspiracy theater theories, there's the Illuminati, there's evil corporations. A lot of people are really charged by the government. <clears throat> if you ever get a chance and watch a little bit of the life of Ramana Maharshi, and later on I will post it, some of the saints, some of these enlightened beings that they came to full realizations and they started to fully realize existence as themselves and how they handle living in the, the world, in this life, and not being involved with the story and the drama of life. The more you begin to shift your vision. Okay, now let me explain this. It's, we're not trying to change the world. Because that doesn't work. We're changing ourselves. It's much easier doing that. Because ultimately the goal of these meetings and the goal of this kind of work is to discover inner peace within yourself. You want to be happy. That's what you want. I want to be happy. And it depends how we define happiness. But all of us who are here have gone through different challenges in our lives. And somehow, in some way, we discover that we can't get happiness in the material world. And when we come to that happiness, it's short term. It keeps you happy for a short period of time. And then worry, fear, anxiety, fear of death, and fear of illness takes over. And fear of being abandoned or being lonely and left out takes over. So basically, we're looking for a system. We're looking for an answer. We're looking for a way that it brings inner peace for us a way that I can be in harmony with the world outside of myself and to be in harmony with my own emotions and thoughts and my body. That's what really we're after, the harmony. So in this quest for finding peace and harmony, we think if I change the outside elements in life, if there's a better government, if I can change the ecosystem, if I can convince the big corporations or powers to do things the way I think it's right, so they, don't, they stop polluting the water or the air or whatever, then I'm going to be happy because I'm projecting my happiness in making changes in the outside. If I can convince my partner to love me more, to make love to me in this way, to be more kind, to be the way I want him to be or I want her to be, then I'm happy. If I can convince my children to be more attentive to me, to be kinder, to be obedient, then I will be happy. But you, we all can see that no matter how hard we're trying to change these different things, it doesn't really work. And when it works, it's short term because it's not really where it is. The change happens inside yourself. It's much easier to change yourself, to shift something within yourself. And even that you can see sometimes how difficult that is than really trying to change life. And a part of this change 
is to change the way we look at things. Maybe it's not the things that are the problem outside. Maybe it's the way we're looking at it. I'm gonna repeat myself one more time. Maybe the problem is not the way things are in the other world. Maybe it's the way I look at them is the problem. So what if I change the way I look at things? What do I have to lose? Do I lose any money? Do I have to shave my head and go sit in the monastery and meditate every day? Do I have to lose weight? Do I have to learn a new language to do that? Do I need to make more money to do that? Do I need to find my soulmate to do that? Do I need to have kids to do that? There's no requirements on the physical world, other world, for me to shift the way I look at something. I have nothing to lose to look at life differently. And if it doesn't work for me, I can always go back to my old ways. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Can you see that? So why don't I give it a try and see what happens? Since it's free, and it has zero requirements. The upside are huge and there is no risk of downside because I can always fall back into the way I am right now. So when I trusted my teacher, Punjaji Papaji, and I began to, because it felt really good to be with this man. It felt really, really good. And he never asked for anything for me. So he didn't want money. He didn't want me to sleep with him. He didn't want me to give him a massage. He didn't want my car, my home. He didn't want anything for me. He didn't care. So it was like, I really feel good being with this person. There is tremendous amount of peace and tranquility is being emanated from him. I feel a lot of love and I feel very peaceful at his presence. So I am going to trust him and I'm going to do what he's telling me what he's showing me or what he's recommending. He's not even telling me to do it. He's not even forcing me or requiring me to do it. He's merely suggesting. So I began to do that and started to look at things. First of all, I followed his message. I went and pulled the mask of everybody off of their face. And in that, I started to see the living soul, one living soul behind everyone's faces. The bad guy and the good guy was the different aspects of the same one. So it made me realize that there is no reason for me to fear anything when I look at everything as God. And when I'm looking at everything as God, the most vicious murderer is walking towards me with a knife and I'm looking at them as myself. And as they're getting close to me, they begin to disappear and they lose their power. Because they don't exist outside of myself. 
There is no boogeyman. It's all an inside job. You begin to shift your way of looking at life, bring it to this way, and you will begin to see the miracles that starts to happen every day in your life. How everything is harmonized, how everything happens in perfection, how Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the Divine Lord, is playing this game called life. She's she plays the role of the bad guy and she plays the role of the good guy. She is in both sides. And that's where you start to recognize the oneness. And that's how you can elevate beyond the good or bad. Otherwise, you're going to stay in the third dimension. You're going to stay in this place of good and evil. And you can evolve. You can go beyond that because you're very engaged in the world of duality. You're trying to correct things in the world of duality. And that's never going to happen. Now you keep taking different courses, different classes about thoughts, create reality, I need to change the way I think, I need to do visualization, I have to do positive thinking, I need to create this, create that, but it just doesn't happen. The world remains screwed up. There is millions of screwed up things in the world. And they don't seem like getting better. In fact, they look like they're getting worse. But when you start to look at it, that it's the same God, same force, same living spirit, playing different aspects of life, then there is no reason to want to change it. and you start to change. You start to become calm and quiet. You start to surrender to life. You begin to see the love of God behind everything, even though it doesn't seem, it doesn't look like it's loving, but you start to see the truth because your true third eye is open. Your real heart is open. You're seeing things from the heart. And then that shift that has happened inside you elevates you automatically, raises your vibrations because your mind comes to ease. You're not questioning God's plans. You're not questioning why things are so screwed up because you see God is doing it. God is the one behind things are wrong and God is the one behind things are right. So you're seeing God in all of things and your mind goes to peace and it's at ease and surrender comes. And when you're surrendering, acceptance of what is takes over your life and everything starts to calm down around you. When everyone else is freaking out and is going crazy, everything in your surrounding is calm and quiet. Nothing can touch that field which is created around you because you see the truth of who you are and you see the truth of everybody else. What's behind it? And hence, you have elevated your consciousness into the fifth dimensional consciousness, the consciousness of oneness. 
you have succeeded to elevate above the good and bad. And this is very effortless. It does not require you to give, to change anything in your other world. All you have to do is look at it differently. Try it. If it doesn't work, come back and do what you're doing. But if it does work, then you will discover peace. Anybody have any questions? Because it's almost it's eleven, it's eleven twenty-five, and um, I can answer one or two questions. I uh, have my uh, to today. We're having a very special event here in Los Angeles at LAX Hilton. It's the tenth year anniversary of the 5D quantum healing that I started it 10 years ago. Our first formal uh, official event was on February 22nd um, in Venice Beach. So 10 years has gone by and 5D quantum healing added uh, an awareness to it. So now it's 5D quantum healing and awareness. And it's running strong and has spread out to seven, eight different countries around the world. And because of that, we have found each other and we have this platform to connect with one another. And the 5D family is growing and through this work, I've been honored and lucky to meet you all and connect with so many like-minded people and our hearts have become connected and there's a lot of love and wisdom being, being exchanged in this connection. So I'm very grateful for your support, for your love, I'm honored that I'm a part of this and somehow Her Majesty God Lord channels through me as it channels through you. And somehow I've been given this role to play this role at this moment of life and share the wisdom. And being able to transmit in this 
in this frequency. And we all feel it. We all feel that when we're together in satsang, when we're quiet, we all feel the presence. We all feel the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the love of God. And this is not a personal matter. It's not something that belongs to me or any other teacher or guru or master. The presence is always here. That's why they call it presence, because it's present. Presence is here. And we're a part of it. Presence is in each and every one of our hearts. And when you're quiet in the absence of your mind, when you come away, you go beyond the busyness, blah, 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 and you sink into your ha heart, you feel the presence. You feel the presence of God. This is not, I'm going to repeat myself one more time. I want to make sure you get this. This is not something I have and you don't have. This is not something I have it more and you have it less or anybody has it more or less. This is something that we all are a part of and it's in our hearts and it's surrounding us. It's dancing around us. It's playing with us. It's always here, the presence. It's our life force the very presence of God. It's our true nature. We're all an expression of Her Majesty, the infinite being, expressing itself in this moment in these different forms, different looks, different ways. That's what it is. And it's a blessing to recognize that and ease into it and relax into it and trust, trusting that the same force, the same lo love has brought us all the way to this point in our lives and is going to continue on this journey and taking us further, wherever we're meant to go. You can trust in that and relax into it. And every day you may encounter a different challenge, but know that that challenge also comes from the same source it's the Leela of life. It creates the challenge and it creates the solution. So if you have God in your life on an everyday basis, then there's nothing to fear. God will put a challenge on your way and God will come and show you the way. You just strengthen your trust in this process and your questions get answered Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for your messages. I appreciate it. I look forward to um, seeing you next week. And um, by the way, I have put my first, uh, my meditation CD, I have put it on my website. Uh, it's 
available for purchase and download. I haven't put it on Facebook yet, uh, but we put it out. And um, we're working on a couple more online courses. So they're probably gonna be ready by uh, end of February or mid uh, March. So I'm working on some, some things that are coming out before I leave on the 15th to Europe. I look forward to seeing you next week. I send you a lot of love and light. And thank you for joining me today. Namaste.